Uh, thanks very much for coming, players and coaches. Uh, I won't talk too long now because we might lose light, it might start raining. We're very lucky to have the senior coach in the club down here, Shane Brick, ex Kerry senior hurler. Uh, probably one of the best free takers, I'd say, of the last 20, 25 years. A lot of the players wouldn't know, but coaches, he would know. Um, so straight away, I'm going to hand it straight over to him. I'm going to get going, OK? Free taking is, is fantastic. I loved it, OK? And, and I think you probably need to love it to do it because you need, I suppose, two things, really. Two of the key things are, number one, consistency, and number two, practice. And they're the two key things, really, for me with free taking. So I guess if you want to, to practice freeze, a lot of people think, oh, you have to be down in front of the goal all the time. A lot of your best practice in terms of building consistency with the way that you pick up the ball and all that kind of stuff can actually be done in your, in your garden at home, uh, in your front garden, back garden. You don't need any space at all. In fact, you don't actually need to even strike the ball to practice free taking because free taking is all about picking up the ball. <clears throat> the most fundamental thing is picking up the ball and picking it up the same way all the time, okay? So I'll talk to you a small bit about I suppose the routine that I used to go through when I used to hit freeze. The best way for you guys, boys and girls, to develop a routine is to develop your own one. I'll show you what I used to do. Some of you might like it, some of you won't. Um, but to develop your own routine. So that in a game like the under 15s, <coughs> one hurling in football there recently, big pressure games, pressure shots, you do exactly the same thing then when you're addressing the free, regardless of whether you're up 10 points or down 10 points, you do exactly the same thing all the time, okay? So maybe just to introduce that a small bit. So what I used to do with the, with the slitter, okay, it was really important to place the slitter. And I used to place it like that with the cuffs of the slitter towards myself, okay? So the idea there is, is that when you go to address the slitter with your hurley, that it comes up onto your, onto your stick and it rolls on nicely onto your stick, okay? You might think it's a small thing. I used to do it all the time, okay? I was also very lucky in that I had um, a, a, a really good golfer, and he was my free-taking coach for most of my career. And he was really good at building that consistency and being really good at small little things. So I guess when I was hitting freeze, that was the first thing, was to place it with the cuffs facing myself. Secondly then, <coughs> you could be out of breath from playing in the game, Next thing then was to get your composure and get your breath. So I'd usually take three deep breaths, just to reset, nice and steady. Next thing then was you'd get your line. So if I was to try and hit between those two posts there, I'd get my line and I'd make sure of my line. So I get my shoulder, my hips in line with the target. The next thing then is the ball. And I would just concentrate on the ball and only the ball. And then I used to just pick up the ball and strike straight through it, okay? Every time, same thing every time, same thing every time. So if you just throw me your little ball there, if you don't mind. So if you want to do this at home, and you just want to practice the pick up, which I used to do a lot, again, you get your position, you take your three deep breaths, or whatever way you want to do it, two, two breaths or whatever it is, and then you just stand over the ball, pick it up, and catch it into your hand like that. Do that 20 times. Okay, and that's just developing the consistency of picking up the ball. Where you place the ball then, does that differ from one person to the other? Where would you place the ball, Dara? Would you place it between your legs, on your front leg, back leg? In front of your front leg. Anybody, hands up, who else does that? In front of their front leg? Yeah, who places it kind of in the middle like that? Yeah, okay, and none of those things are wrong. So that's why I'm saying that you build up your own way of, of striking it, of picking up the ball, of striking it, have your own routine. It's really, really important. Okay. The next thing then, obviously, is, is the strike. And what you want to do then is build up a consistent strike all the time. So you're hitting the ball exactly the same way. And I suppose when we practice freeze, a lot of the time we look at how many freeze did I score. So I took 20, I scored 17, that means I hit 17 really good ones, and I hit three really poor ones. But maybe the three you hit that you missed the target with were actually really good frees, 
when you just need to change something small. And when you do practice them, as I say to Shane and to Connor and those lads that are hitting them with the seniors, only allow yourself a certain number of, of strikes. So you know the way when you're down on the pitch and you say, right, I'm going to hit 15 frees. And the next thing, you hit 10 in a row over. Next thing, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 go wide. What you do, Ronan? Is it not? What you do? You? You keep going. And that's the worst thing you can do as a free taker. Keep going and going and going and going. So you say it yourself, right? I'm going down to the pitch today. I'm going to hit 20 frees. But then I'm going to stop. So I'm really going to focus on the 20 frees. And then I'm going to stop hitting them. Regardless of whether they're going over. Or whether they're going wide. Or whatever else. I'm just going to stop hitting after 20 frees. And that's it. So when Shane and Connor are, are practicing their frees. They'll hit two from the, third, or from the 21. The middle and the far side. He'll do the same, the 45 and the 65, and then they go home. Regardless of whether they've scored them all, or they've missed loads of them, or whatever. Can anybody see why you would do that? Why would you just say, I'm just going to hit? You hit them for the 15s, do you? Yeah. So, can you see why you go down and say, I'm going to hit 20, I'm going to go home? So, otherwise, we're going to be down here all night. And you're going to say, ah, oh, well, I'm just going to... Right, look, I'm going to go again. I miss that one. I'm going to go again. I'm going to go again. I'm going to go again. You, you really commit to the 20 frees. You really commit and you put your best effort into it. You reset. You go through your, your program. You strike through the ball. If it goes wide, what about it? You move on to the next one and you hit the next one. And you just stick to what you said before you started. Because in the game, if you hit a ball wide, are you allowed to tell the referee, oh, hold on a second there, buddy. Get the ball back there, I want, I want to hit it again. You can't, you can't. Yeah, you only get one chance at it. So when you're practicing, you want to practice like that, all right? So I suppose, look, just with, with the freeze, right? And when we're, um, when we're coaching, when we're coaching free-taking, we're all caught up on the outcome, which is, did it go wide or did it go over the bar? And I suppose, you'd be just trying to, especially for kids, probably try to get away from that a small bit in terms of all about the strike and following through and, and following through the ball and not being worried about the outcome all the time. And you see the top free takers when they strike the ball, they're still looking here because they're not worried about where the ball is going. They're worried about getting their technique right and following through. And some of them don't even look at the post until the ball is well in flight. Some of them don't look at the post at all because they're not worried about the outcome. They're worried about the process of picking the ball and following through and building the consistency all the time. And I suppose as coaches, like if a, if a kid, boy or girl takes 10 frees and you're with them and they hit one wide and you're saying, okay, what do I say to them now that they've hit it wide? You're probably looking at what they're doing right. So you might say, geez, the pickup was excellent. The control of the ball was excellent. Just maybe on the follow through, you, you, you had a quick look to see where the ball was going and you pulled your shot a little bit. So you're looking at what can we improve the next time. Not so much that the ball went wide, but what can I improve on in terms of their technique um, the next time they're, they're, striking, they're striking the ball. Um, yeah, I, I would say the jab. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just for the simple reason of, of control over the ball. Like when, when free takers play, do it a lot, like it's all just about the pick up. If you get the pick up right and the ball is coming with you, like most fellas when the, and, and girls, when they build up the bank of, of practice behind them, it's going to be a score. Where it goes wrong is on the pick up. So if you're roll lifting, roll lifting a pick up, there's a lot, a lot of movement between the ball and the slitter. Whereas if, if you're jab lifting the, the pick up, you know, there's a lot less that can go wrong with it. Then you can, you can control the ball and bring it with you uh, for the strike. With the ball, with the ball placement, why I like the front foot is that you're bringing it with you, you know. But then some people will have it in the middle. Um, I, I like the front foot because you can, you can bring the ball with you. Like some people will hit it here, some people will hit it here. It doesn't particularly matter. But 
like just bringing the ball bringing the ball with you when you're uh, when you're picking it is really really important yeah like there's very few that'll hit them off both sides like us and Gleason can hit them off both sides but like usually you'd pick a side that you're stronger on and, and you'd perfect that because like the amount of practice that has to go into it like you would pick one side early enough and, 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 and you'd go with that not really yeah I would think the stronger side yeah yeah so you're, and, you're right yeah, yeah like, like I suppose it can be more natural to strike off your right hand side but like if, if you're stronger off your left it, you know it, it doesn't particularly matter really um, the biggest thing is is having the same method the same way to do the thing every time you get up to it so regardless of whether it's on the 21 or the 45 or the 65 or regardless of the angle that they're addressing the ball and they have their routine um, you know the breathing three or four breaths just to kind of reset from the game and to get into free taking mode is, is helpful as well like you know I, I took threes from a very young age and I did lots of it and I never changed no matter what the distance mm -hmm. I don't know your view on that because people have different views. The further out you go, mm -hmm. do you run up to it? No, so like, especially nowadays, like underage, maybe to an extent that they, they have to force the strike. But like, there's another thing with, I suppose, you want the maximum distance with the least possible effort in terms of the way you're striking the ball. Um, lots of us miss freeze from large distances because we force it and then our, our technique which we've been practicing on you, you don't back it basically like the slitters are lighter nowadays there's no reason why you you can't hit exactly the same strike um you know in terms of of, of distance you don't really need to force it like you know I, it's all about is is having and again it's another reason why you kind of come away from the outcome in terms of free taking and practicing it because otherwise you go into a game and your designated free taker hits the first one and it goes wide if they're used to kind of saying oh geez that's gone wide that was really poor um the second one could possibly go wide and the third because they're thinking about the previous shot whereas like if you can get your guy or girl to talk about the feel of the strike as opposed to where it ended up i think you're on a better path and it's like the warm up before the game, if you see fellas hitting freeze or girls, whatever, and the next thing one or two go wide, and they're like, oh, they're taking that into the game with them then. Whereas if you have it for the, the, the kid or the, the young guy or girl or whatever is going to hit in the freeze, that the warm up, the focus of it is, is to get the feel of the strike and to get the feel of it. Don't worry about where the ball is going, get the feel of the strike, and they say, yeah, I have the feel of it now. And they're taking the feel of the strike into the game, more so than the outcome of where the ball went when they were hitting the freeze. And I think that's really important as well. It's like a batsman. When he goes out, he says, throw me a few balls there, I want to get my eye in. And it's like, she can't get your eye in because you, you don't see the ball is coming so fast. What he's trying to get is the actual, is the actual, the actual feel of the bat hitting the ball. And that's very much around the same with, with the hurling, in, in my opinion, is that if we get the feel of it, you don't have to look at the post afterwards. If you catch that ball right, you know it's going on the right trajectory where you're after hitting it. So just concentrating on the feel of the strike as opposed to always looking at the outcome and I'm sure it must have been a bad free if it went wide. Maybe it's just the slightest little bit of a change in your alignment and you're away. Ronan, will you would you just demonstrate your pick? Yeah, just to pick it up into your hand. So when you're placing the ball, excellent. In the front foot, lovely. Get your line, and then pick it into your hand. Lovely. Excellent. Anybody else? Next thing we're going to have a look at, and we'll go up here to do it, is the actual striking of the ball, and and how we follow through the strike, uh, etc. So. Lots of us, when we're striking freeze or when we're striking off our hands, we tend to hit the ball like that. So it's like it goes way, way up into the air. What's wrong with that? Or why, what could go wrong when you strike a ball like that? The wind's going to take it. Anything else? They won't travel as far. Brilliant. Super answers. It's really important that we strike, we strike through the ball because if you have a wind or you're striking into the wind or it's, it's wet and it's rainy, whatever, 
you need to be able to follow through and strike through the ball. So that's really important. And I often used to use the net when I was training and practicing to build up a consistent strike. So stand on the 21, try and hit the net five times in a row without the ball hitting the ground. So it's just building up the same strike. So that whether you have a free on the 21 or the 45 or your 80 yards from goal, you're hitting the ball in the same in the same manner every time. Okay, so we can just work we can just work from here, right? So if we work from the from the 13, when you get good at the 13, depending on what age you are, work out to the 21, okay? So again, with frees, you don't have to do the full free taking process all the time. So if you want to just warm up and get your striking right, so you'd, if you give me another ball there, Ronan. So the idea is, so that's poor strike. We go again. Okay, and another one. Lovely. Okay, so every time I hit the ball there, I hit it a different way. You see that? Okay. So I have no real control over what happens. One of them hit the ground, one of them hit the net low, one of them hit the net high. So what we're trying to do is hit the ball, you throw me the ball again, in the same way all the time. So what I would recommend is, is that we strike through the ball rather than under the ball. So if you strike under it, it's like what I did there a minute ago, the ball goes up into the sky and if it's windy or whatever, it'll get taken off course. Whereas if we strike through the ball, it'll go exactly in the trajectory you want it to go. Is that fair enough? So when you're practicing that then, what I'd recommend is, is that you just do what I did there with 10 balls you're just building the same strike all the time. Then you try and step into it maybe and strike it like that and play around with it. So that you're building confidence in your strike and you're hitting it the same way all the time. Really, it's a really good point and a way, and a way to kind of stop yourself kind of leaning, leaning backwards. You want to kind of go forward all the time is if you just throw me the ball there. Good girl, thanks. So if you place it on your front foot, Okay, if you place the ball on your front foot, you're more likely to go forward with the ball than to go backwards. So what we don't want to do when we're hitting freeze is, is to stand, pick it, and try and hit freeze like that in a standing position. So if you give me the ball there, but thanks. So what we want to do is we want to carry the ball forward with a momentum and then strike it. Okay, so when you're standing back, you bring the ball with you and you strike, okay? So you bring, you're bringing the ball forward and then you're striking the ball. So that stops you doing what, what Pat spoke about there, which is maybe hitting it off your back foot. So you're hitting it off your front foot and you're carrying the momentum of your body through then and through the strike. So what I would start with is just for yourselves is striking the ball into the net without it hitting the ground, then doing it with a free, placing the ball and trying to strike the ball into the net 10 times. And then when you build that up, then go out to the 21, okay? So now you've maybe done your first three or four free practicing sessions, and you actually haven't hit any freeze yet. So you haven't? Because we're trying to perfect our technique, and we're pr trying to perfect how we're going to hit our freeze from now right the way through our careers until when we're finished and crocked like me so yeah it's another good point is that you know if you can control the ball in your hurley the longer you hold the ball in your hurley the more control you have over it and you can bring it into the perfect place that you want to bring it to, to strike the ball okay so but what he's talking about there what Gavin's talking about there is, is that if you're if you're lining up a free that you're not firing it up in the air like this and you're kind of you're off balance striking it then so that if you give me another ball there, good girl, thanks, lovely. So, the longer you can keep the ball on your hurley and bring it with you before you strike it, the better, okay? So if you hold it like that and you're watching, watching the ball and then you strike through it, okay? I would do a load of this for the first number of weeks, months, while you're building up your technique and what you have decided you want to go with for you as, as a free taker, what works best for you. And I wouldn't go any further than here with the net. Or even if you're at home and you don't have a net, it's just the pickup. And again, the pickup covers off the points the lads are making there in terms of carrying the ball with you, controlling the ball on the hurley, 
and striking and striking the ball that you strike through it rather than strike strike under it okay another point with free taking is <laughs> is that when we're hitting the ball we we think we need to bait the letter off it we need to drive it into the middle of next week and i suppose the best golfers the best hurlers they use economy of effort so they have the least effort in for the maximum output so you just want a nice controlled strike strike through the ball okay then you're not forcing it sometimes when we get a free out a little bit we think to ourselves oh that's a really tough one i need to hit it really hard and then we pick it up and we try to hit it too hard and just before we hit we push it a little bit more and then it takes the ball off course and, and the ball goes wide so nowadays with the, the slitters are lighter no problem just follow through and strike the ball in the same way um, in the same way every time okay so we might just get uh, all the slitters there and just everybody just try and slap the ball into the net so let's try and go halfway between the crossbar and and the ground okay so we'll get all the if you just step out there Ronan you felt away if you have a slitter if you have a slitter yeah off you go nice and steady strike all right next up whoever else has a slitter let's go all right lovely strike well done good girl lovely strike you can leave the ball you're all right yeah off we go lovely strike excellent yeah lovely strike excellent yeah it's good strike well done good good girl off we go again good strike that's it good yeah good good strike well done excellent good well done off you go well done that's it good strike well done we all out of slitters okay so another thing you just throw that one over to me there good man another thing then when we're hitting freeze right and we're hitting freeze proper we're going for scores is that just before just before we make contact with the ball we take our eyes off what we're supposed to do and we say i just got one last little look at the goal post just to see how it's going and just in that last look we pull the ball and the ball goes wide so what we want to try and do is again going back to uh, the steps we spoke about earlier so we place the ball and we spoke about that now people have decided what way they want to do it so place it in front of your front foot then you get your line in terms of where you want to hit it okay your few deep breaths to take yourself and compose yourself and then you stand over the ball then we bring it up nice and controlled and we strike the ball what's really important and if you look at like patrick horgan any of the top free takers they strike the ball and they're still looking at where the ball was before they hit it so they they're really just concentrating on striking the ball they look at where the ball has been before they struck it so the ball is here strike and they're still looking here where the ball was and they trust that the ball is going over the bar is that all right so i want us to just try just to practice that so just stand out here just step through with the ball i want you to hit it and i want you to look this way and trust that the ball is going to go over the bar can you do that for me good girl so place your ball excellent shoulders in line great score well done that's really tough you're the first one to step up well done fantastic really really good yeah do you want to have a go there's no pressure so it's really really quiet no pressure lovely excellent that's a super strike man Ronan nice and steady follow through with the strike now lovely great strike excellent 
Well done. Just one thing I pick out from just watching the few frees is that we're in a rush. So we're picking the ball really fast. We're picking it really fast and hitting it. So then the ball is going off target a little bit. So we want to take our time and bring the ball with you. So when you have it on the hurley, bring the ball with you. So you've control over it and bring the ball with you, have it on your hurley, yeah? Anybody, any questions? We happy enough? Yeah, any coaches, any questions? We're all good, yeah? So we recap on what we're going to do when we, uh, when we get a free in the game. So we're in the game, what's the first thing we do? Steady yourself, very good. Take a couple of deep breaths, lovely. What's the next thing? Place it properly, yeah? With the cuffs towards us, very good. Anything else? What do we do next? So we're after placing the ball now. We're after taking the deep breaths, we're nice and chilled out. Take your time over it, yeah? Pick the ball nice and slowly, bring it with you, and then follow through the strike. Where's the best place to practice? There, here, good answer, yeah. If you can't come down here, where can you practice? You can practice in your back garden, and you can pick, practice the most important part of free taking, which is picking up the ball consistently, the same way every time. That rather than being worried all the time about where the ball ended up, that you ask yourself, how did the strike, how did the strike feel to me, was it, did it feel a good strike? So lots of the time when you hit a ball, you have a fair idea whether it's gone over or not, haven't you? From the way it sounds off the hurley or how it feels off the hurley. So when you're practicing, if you say to yourself, okay, I struck that now, how did that feel? Okay, I came off the side of the hurley or, okay, what could I do maybe different the next time? So maybe I might slow down my pickup or I might continue to watch the ball after I strike or whatever it is. But as you're saying there, we don't need to beat ourselves up all the time if we miss a free. Because if we use, oh, it was a good free because I scored, it was a bad free because I miss. If you go out in a game then, and the first one goes wide, then you're saying, oh man, I'm in trouble. Whereas if you use the warm-up beforehand, and we spoke about this as well, if we use the warm-up beforehand to just get the feel of the strike. And you often see guys before matches, and the first thing they'll do is they'll go to the 65 over on the sideline either side and they'll go hit and freeze. The most difficult free that they could possibly hit. You don't need to do that. Especially when you're practicing before a game. Just come out 45 yards in front of the goal like that and get the feel of the strike. Get, go through your routine, practice your, your routine and get the feel of the strike. And you know the minute you've struck it whether it's on course or not. Yeah, so let's not be looking at the outcome all the time. Did it go wide or did it go over? Let's try and think about how did that strike feel? It's like in golf. If you're trying to, if you're doing pitching and you're standing over the pitch, yeah, and you're saying to yourself, oh, geez, I hope I don't shank this. What are you going to do? You're going to shank it, yeah? And it's the same in, in, in hurling. If you're in front of the ball, if you have your little routine ready, you're not thinking, I hope I don't puck this wide. You're thinking, I need to place the ball, I need to get my line right, I need to get my breaths right. Now I concentrate on the ball, I bring the ball with me, and I follow through. Rather than, there's five minutes to go in the game, if I miss this, I'm in trouble. So there's method to having your routine ready and to sticking to your routine. Yeah? Okay? So I just want to say thanks a million for uh, your attention and wish you all the best with your um, free-taking journey and no doubt I'll be watching lots of you on TV in years to come. Um, so thanks a million for, for your time. All right? Thank you. Cheers, guys.